Hello. Welcome back to, I guess, our actual real season two or year two of Like Clockwork. Oh, wow. Um, it's going to be an exciting year. Uh, we have found some... Uh, <clears throat> We found some amazing new players to join us uh, this year. Um, and of course, we will be going back to those who have left because we definitely want to see what's happening with them uh, as they head off to other parts of the world and continue the story in that direction. But for now, we will be following Shailun, Panabon, and Perunia. Um, it's, uh... Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Aren't you glad to see me again? Of course. Delighted. Um, we're getting into the convention season, and since we are so fully post-pandemic that half the people have forgotten that there even was one, um, we'll be hitting up the conventions and everything, so that's uh, that's going to be real exciting. Uh, I'll be at Origins. Uh, some of us will be at Origins. Some of us will be at Gen Con. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting times. Uh, exciting times for Rem Alternus as well. Uh, since we, um, since the last time we were here with uh, our friends at Like Clockwork, uh, we started, Rem Alternus started a new show, uh, which Sarah will tell us about in a moment. And <clears throat> we're getting really close to uh, to kickstarting Book 2 of the Comic. We, um, we have kickstarted uh, successfully. I don't think it's done yet, right? But <clears throat> it's successful. Um, it has... 10 days left today, and uh, I was the 69th backer on it. And now it's over 200, but I was number 69, which I was very proud of being able to catch. So. John waited. It was like 68. Nope. Got to keep no, going. I, One more. I was like, I hear, I saw 68. I was like, and go. This John. is the only opportunity I have. Yes. Yes. Indeed. So, Misspent Youth <clears throat> is the name of that game that, uh, uh, and, um, just check that out. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. I think we have a stream going on uh, with that as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, I'm not going to steal Sarah's thunder. She's got some other news too that I think she's going to want to share with everybody. And so with that, before we go any further, I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce Sin uh, real quick. Um, Hello. <laughs> so Sin is one of our. Uh, new players, new cast members that is joining us, and we'll get into exactly what uh, Sin is playing and in full introductions later. Um, but I'm excited. I'm super excited, and uh, and then we'll move on to Alex. What's going on in Chicago land? Oh my goodness, Chicago. Um, well, you know, we had went 46 days with one day of sunshine, and then we had two in a row which was perfect because we had a funeral. So we're like, great. On the day where it would have been fine for it to be press depressing, it's like bright and sunshiny. So here we are. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there and the people who um, are gracious enough to act as mothers to others. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, well, up above Alex in our, in our Twitch stream there is John... What's going on, John? Actually, in the Discord, I'm to like the I'm to the left of Alex, so like, oh, I'm above Alex. Right? Um, it's going well. I I brought rain to Chicago when I when I visited <laughs> Alex, so I made sure to drop off some rain, which I'm sure you were appreciative of. Uh, I almost I almost only got struck by lightning once, so I mean that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's a really great month. Where I'm heading into Pride. Uh, june and july are kind of big months in the queer community so i'm heading into all of my pride stuff uh, but before i do that um my everything is gay even the straight stuff podcast we're doing an episode on one of my favorite sondheim shows coming up this week uh into the woods which i've had stuck in my head all weekend um surf city donuts my audio drama sci-fi weirdness thing is returning for season two shortly with a new narrator um because I'm pulling a God is a female uh, American gods, no gay men type thing. Um, and on May 12th, uh, with Gen Con TV, I'm going to be one of the youthful offenders in a misspent youth thing. I'm very excited to learn the system, uh, much like learning the Essence 20 system for Power Rangers 
and uh, doing the Saints and Sinners podcast, which is also coming to Rim Alternus. Um, I'm really excited to have back Misspent Youth and then on the 12th be part of the Misspent Youth Useful Offenders experience with Rem. Uh, and it's super cool and it's super awesome. And because Clear is punk, I'm really excited to lean into the punkness of it all. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Very busy there, John. But but maybe maybe not as busy as Sarah. Uh, what is going on? <laughs> what isn't? Um, <laughs> it's been a fantastic uh, year, quarter, um, month off from, from uh, Like Clockwork as much as I missed it. There was a lot to do. So we launched the Misspent Youth Kickstarter. So we're, I think, about just like 27 or 28 dollars away from 13,000 which is great um so just over two thousand dollars away from our first stretch goal which is the creator of misspent youth uh robert bull writing a chapter for the new book um that's owned by fragging unicorns games um it's it's a really cool chapter about robots um for those <laughs> of us that have gotten because uh, i get the updates now uh, for it it's a really cool like take on uh, the free will of robots um, I really want to get us to fifteen thousand uh, because I really want that story. Well, so, like, I, yeah. I'm I'm really excited about all their stretch goals. I, it's honestly an honor to work with Fug because, um, like, their attention to promoting diversity and stuff like that. Like, Robert was actually supposed to write one of the core ch chapters just as a gimme, and he stepped back to make room for another uh, author of diversity. Um, and uh, our $20,000 stretch goal is another diverse author uh, that's written for like thirsty sword lesbians and a bunch of other things. Um, so that's really cool. And I love supporting that. Um, so there's a lot of cool stretch goals coming uh, if we can hit them. So that's, and that, that's been a huge thing. We've been doing a ton of streaming for that. Uh, there is a campaign of misspent youth happening every Tuesday during the day at 12.30 Central, we go live and play an episode throughout the Kickstarter. So this week is episode four. Um, and Cliff is really mean to us as the authority. So we get to stand up and fight him and punch him in the face. Um, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a really great game. If you haven't checked it out, and it's, it, it, especially if you're a new gamer, like it is not a lot of crunch. It is storytelling and character building with your friends. And that's really cool. Um, so other than that, we also launched, uh, you guys have kind of alluded to it a couple times, our Gen Con TV first ever show. Um, so we stream on, on twitch.tv slash Gen Con TV on uh, Thursdays. Um, we start at 4 p.m. Central with an hour long episode of Rules of Cool, which is uh, me interviewing different game creators and talking about systems, world, lore, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then we go live with um, Shadowrun Sixth World Emerald Glitch, uh, which we left on a stinking cliffhanger because uh, this week we're taking a break. Every month we're going to take a break from Shadowrun to give our cast a break and do a one shot of anything we feel like. So this time it's going to be Misspent Youth. Try to get that to a little broader audience. In June, we have Legend of the Five Rings planned. Uh, so if you like your samurai, uh, that's an awesome RPG um and then beyond we'll see uh we are going to origins as rem uh and um we're gonna have actually two booths one is going to be 525 i want to say and it's a, a 20 foot booth where we'll be promoting uh winston who is our gm on saturday mornings his new board game gilded age which is coming to kickstarter later this year and then we'll also be in the artist alley with coddlesworth um, so you can get your art, you can get a copy of the comic book. Um, it's incredible. Shut up, Danny. Uh, <laughs> um, honestly, like we're getting this giant thing of the cover of the first issue to hang behind the booth. And like, I mean, the art's just gorgeous if you haven't seen it. And, um, we love the story enough to sit here every day for over, for a year and a half and tell a story and keep it going when the cast needs to change. So, um, yeah, we're, we're waiting on uh, uh, enough followers to launch the Kickstarter. So if you haven't yet, please go to remalternus.com slash kick um, and hit notify me on launch to follow the project. We're waiting for that to hit at least 100, if not more, um, before we go live. So gosh, am I missing anything else? That was a lot. 
Probably, but we'll have another show. Okay. Whew. All right. So um, with that, I mean, it, we're, we're going to pick everything up here in, uh, in, in year two of Like Clockwork. So um, I don't know about you, but it seems to me that it's about that time. The city of Gilaluti, in the desert, uh, on the western coastline of Aishan. In the days following the battle in the archaeological dig site, down on the waterline, there's been a lot of discovery. The scholar Rososi was a member of the Sajia Rotoro's court, a man with a lot of influence. To learn that this person who is so close to what is a, the man who is effectively the, the king, the highest of kings in all of the desert, uh, was very concerning to to all of the court and, and not the least of all, uh, all the Sajerotoro himself. The Lujok orcs of the lodge were able to convince the lodge master of the truth of Shailun's concerns. And the lodge master was able to then speak to the Sajia Rutro about all the events and assure him that these individuals that had been under his watch were doing what was best for the desert kingdom. And so they were granted the opportunity to be a part of many of the events following um, as other scholars move down into the archaeological center to look through the notes of the scholar and associate um, Lampira Flaglight's library pass, fully honored, granting Shailun access to the great library, where she spent many days in study seeking answers to the questions she had developed, while also paging through the spell book of the scholar Rososi, or one of his spell books, at least, the one that he had with him at the archaeological site. And of course, amidst all of this, the fact that Locks, uh, Lachlan Dossett, had decided that he absolutely needed to see what, what happened to his father. And so we find ourselves on the edge of the city. The mesa that everyone stands upon, one of the larger coastal mesas of Gilaluti, because of course the entire city is built throughout the cliffs and crags of a river delta that had furrowed through the earth. 
uh, creating several canyons. And on this edge, Shailun and Panabon and Purunya stand watching as the thrumming aurora, an airship no less, carrying locks and Aegis, and also their friend, 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 yes, Zivid, the gnome, away and towards Istapanur. The others could not go with as there are just still too many answers they need and also vengeance to be taken. And they stand and watch and wave until the airship is out of sight. I, how much confetti can I throw before I clog the airship? Uh, just like give a sense of occasion to the events. I I mean, you can throw confetti all day long. Uh, that that's Ooh, that's not really a, a danger here. There will come a point where people around you are going to probably be a little annoyed at the amount of confetti you're throwing. And then I mean, as the wind picks it up and then like just kind of deposits it down through the various cracks and it rains down on lower and lower levels of the city. People just need to garner a sense of occasion about things. You know, it's not my fault people are so like sincere. Maybe not. Perunia huffs at the, the sight of all of the confetti strewing around her, shakes her head, and walks away because she doesn't want to look like she's associated with the crazy gnome who just put little pieces of paper everywhere in there. As she walks, <clears throat> it's hard for anyone not to notice... <clears throat> The greatsword strapped to her back now. A very intricately wrought weapon that uh, is probably far superior to the sheath that she carries it in at the moment. But uh, what you can see of it, there is a... The handle ends uh, where the cross guard becomes almost like... Dr dragon wings, the very draconic wing-like shape that comes out, and then the head of a dragon <clears throat> sits as if devouring the blade. Um, and that is what you can see, but it is uh, a golden color with silver strands uh, interwoven throughout the metalwork. Uh, a very, very beautiful and expensive looking blade. However, the true value of the blade is not apparent to anyone around. Runya knows, though. Uh, with Shilun's help over the last few days, she was able to learn, uh, learn the command word that caused fire to erupt along the length of the blade. And she learned the name of the blade, Haule Flopse, which upon speaking the word Gelai, which is the dragon-born draconic word for ignite, the sword would erupt in flame. Under that is still the nasty, iron, rusty blade that seems to work very well against things from the Shadow Fae that she can't seem to get rid of. And she cannot seem to make it look prettier. Yeah, that's a, that's just a uh, very much um, contrasting the beautiful sword that she's otherwise carrying. And Shailun, there are so many thoughts. Uh, 
I need to invent the word for migraine. I'm right here. You can use my name. <laughs> well done. <laughs> I have such a panabon. <laughs> we'll see if we'll see if y'all can make that stick. <laughs> Well, um, it is midday. What, um, what would you like to do today? I've, um, as, as I watch the airship in the distance, um, I'll whisper to the two of them, um, I've, uh, found some information we should discuss. We can do that. But perhaps not here. Back to the lodge then? Yes, uh, I, I think that I'll probably get a little bit more training in if your news doesn't otherwise change the course of our day? I'm sure it won't. That hasn't happened. That's that's not a thing that we've that we've gone through. Where did you get all that tiny paper? I, I don't know that you should ask questions that you don't want answers to. That's fair. I, it, it's not important if that's I look at Shailun's book. I, I let him use the romance novel that Lox bought me. That was a really big romance novel. It, it's a lot of confetti. <laughs> I should have read things that I remembered from it as I was ripping it up. That would have been really effective. Oh well. Next time. Let's make it not a next time. Or at least warn me first so I'm nowhere in the vicinity as she shakes it out of her hair. Slash spikes. All the, all the frills. Well, all right, well, you make your way back to the lodge. The center of orc culture in Jilaluti. Um, and upon entering, uh, are greeted by several of the orcs there, having as a group um, earned their respect and uh, and staying as honored honored friends, guests and friends. They have somehow learned to cop Shailun's facial expressions to know when there's business afoot that she is wanting to move quickly too, and thus they should stay out of her way. Or if she's in a more personable mood. Uh, so most of them simply nod and smile and give greetings, but make way for the three of you to move up to the room that you had been staying in. Right, so, um, as you know, I've been doing uh, research on the artifacts that were recovered from the sarcophagi and um, those who owned them. And I, I found a, a great deal probably that wouldn't be too much of interest to you. Um, I do think, obviously, uh, that, that the owners of these objects, the original owners, were, they were called the the Desert Devils. Um, they are, the objects are inherently evil. Um, and so there is always risk, which is why I've been trying to separate them. Um, however, there are, I've also been spending a great deal of time reflecting on dedomancy and wondering at some time if 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 there's going to be a necessity to fight fire with fire 
um, or to study it further to know if there's an off switch, a kill switch, some some way to stop it when we come across it. Um, hold on, hold on. Did you just say you want to practice dedomancy? I don't. Can want we like to. just pause there? I don't want to, but I'm saying there might be benefit to knowing the intricacies of what we're up against. I, I, well, I'm pretty sure you have to become evil to do that. What if you can't come back from that? I, you know what? I, mm, Perunia, I'm going to go ahead and say that seems like a terrible idea. The fact that you say that makes it a lot easier for me to say this next part. Um, hoping. Okay. I'm not even going to tell you what I'm hoping. Um, two of the artifacts remain with us. Um, one of them... Um, she rifles through her spell book, not a, a phone for notes that Danny sent earlier. Um, <laughs> um, shuffling pages. The spell book is so different. <laughs> what did you do to it? <laughs> my, I've leveled up my magic quite a bit. And this is all my <laughs> spell book. <laughs> Our awakened spell book. <laughs> um, its name is Siri. She, she rifles in her bag and pulls out uh, the amulet that you guys have seen at this point. Um, this amulet is super powerful. Um, it allows me to cast the user to cast spells more easily. You can store spells in, in the amulet. Um, you It, it makes it easier to hit targets and more difficult for targets to dodge the effects of of magic um it's a powerful magical item that would could make our spe the spells that i cast um very hard to ignore um if we come up to to another fight against flamgesu it may be it may be something that we want on hand in case we need it. However, as Perunia said, these artifacts are evil and there could be consequences we don't know. So I, I, I don't think it's a good thing to lean on as a crutch. Um, more of an in case of emergency. Um, or we continue to get rid of these into the um, into the world until we can find a way to destroy them. Um, before uh, I let you speak up to that, there's the other item that I still have that I want to talk to you about. This is, she pulls out a massive, like the head would have to be like this big on this thing. It's a helm. Um, and says, uh, this is the implacable rage of Songots. Uh, what it does... Is it because his head was so big? Is that is that why it's an implacable rage? Like, I'd be kind of sad if my head were that size. Only if your body didn't match. I Continue, mean, Oh, that would be hilarious. That's the kind of evil I want to face. Hilarious evil. So, the wearer of this helm chooses a target um an enemy if you will um while that enemy is in your sights and in your mind you have you take less damage damage in a fight from anything besides the target of your fury hmm. secondly any item that is not, and her eyes flick to your sword, uh, is not magical, does no damage whatsoever to you. Um, thirdly, I will try it on. She like clings to it like in a big hug. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you wear it, you'll you wear me too. Um, All right, I'll wait. Thirdly, <laughs> she tugs it back. 
um, you you are able to harm your enemy that is your target more easily. And finally, while you wear it, you have knowledge of where and how far the distance to your target is. Sounds great. What's the drawback here? Evil. Evil. Okay. Okay. Now, hold on. Because I am not convinced that the items themselves are evil. Sure. Doing deadomancy, that's evil. You have to practice evil. But I feel like things, maybe it's how the user uses them. That None of the things that you just described are inherently evil unto themselves. Anyway, I, it's worth the risk. risk. It looks big enough. Fit all my hair under there. So obviously, this could lead us directly to Flumgesu. Isn't that the point? It's, it's a good thing, but again, this is an evil item used in the past for millennia as to, to hurt people and, and to subdue populations. It's not a good what? thing and it's not something we should decide to do lightly. I yes, Panabon. I have two questions. I have actually it's a thought and a question actually. because uh, cause this is a big helm, so I'm not seeing the whole thing. Does does the helm have any like symbols on it? Because uh, I've been like watching us catalog all this stuff and I've been kind of looking at the symbols to see if any of them like match up to see if like any of the stuff should be with the thieves, for instance. Um, or the water relocation specialists, as it were. So, like, does this, does this home thing have any, like, symbols on it? The helm looks like it is made from a large and beaten skull of an unknown creature. Um, it has uh, horns like a, a ram that protrude from the skull, but the skull itself is almost looks like uh, a a sort of um, odd humanoid creature so it's not like a ram's head you know it doesn't it the the, the skull looks like it might have belonged to uh, perhaps like an ape or um, but but very large uh, and it is it does not have any markings that you can see however the eyes are um, Embedded into the eyes of the skull are two uh, red gemstones that are uh, kind of streaked across with gold, uh, veins of gold. Uh, you don't know if it's gold or if it's just the color. Um, and it's, it's, it is a very off-putting piece. But no, no Perunia is not put off. <laughs> it's something in, in Perunia, I think we know where to find Flumgesu. He's a public figure in Flunelbufel, um, so we may not need it for that purpose exactly, but it, at least not now. Um, but it might be beneficial to have on hand if we need, and if we don't, we destroy it. Um, it it's these all should be destroyed. I just don't know how yet. I, would I think also that's fair, Shailun. I would also request that if you end up in jail again and you try to light me on fire, that maybe don't wear the helmet. Because I still think about that sometimes. You know, the time that you lit me on fire when I was trying to help you. Remember, remember that? Like it was like yes, years after ago you first murdered someone in front of me. Yes, I remember. I and mean, to be fair, not... I did. I gave you the signal to not like scream, and you started screaming and and running. I mean, that just. You but it, that's not murdered even, that's, someone that's old, that's old history. in it's, front it's of me. Um, they, they, bad people, bad people. They were. They were. It, it's fine. Everything. Yes, fine. It's fine. you were um, a bad person. Yes. Okay, all right. We've all done some things we're not proud of. But let's let's move on on this one. Uh, you know, nobody wants so, to dwell in the past. So here is my here is my second thought slash question so we've got we've got desert devil stuff 
um, which is kind of a fun, that would be a great band, actually, Desert Devils. Uh, but that's not even heard of that. So are there, like, I guess, mountain devil things in, like, Palakun? Or, like, I know Lox and Aegis just went to Istapanur. Are there, like, Istapanur? What, what I was able to find is these five artifacts were from these demigods of the desert, of Vaishan. Um, and they were the children of, um, she flips back through her book to find the name of, 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 of. Richard? Is it like Richard? Richard it, it, is, it is not Richard. I've got it. Uh, I've got it. It's, it's Mer Mersean. Uh, Mersean was like the big god, and then these demigods were under him. Mersean was one of the original five, I believe, uh, gods that were split up the world, kind of, and he went to the desert. Um, so originally, yes, there would be other gods in other regions, um, so, but dear god, Mil please let that not be our problem. And, and Milfrun was the god of Alakun, or is Milfrun the of the Dragonborn? Alakun? Of the dragonborn, mm, yes. No, no, that was our god before we we came to this this world. So we we brought Malfrun with us. Well, the you I, know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where like if we've got hierarchies of gods to worry about. If Malfrun's like the demigod under someone, like if this is a whole thing that's going to be like a precedent. I just want to know if like when I say hail Malfrun, ironically, if like I'm going to get a lightning bolt in the face at some point. And some like higher dragonborn. I just, I mean, I just you win. raise the point. Um, I was pretty convinced before like all of this god stuff that Malfrun was not real and active in our world, and now like I'm maybe not so sure. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not worried about it because I'm a gnome, and it feels like <laughs> back to <laughs> it, the it, topic. It was all kind of lip service and right, right. Okay. Okay, these two the objects, are you, are, are you both comfortable with keeping these on us for now? Yes. It could make us a target. That's the other, I mean, more of a target, I guess. I think we should definitely keep them. Are you asking me to wear the amulet? Because I can pull off an nope, amulet. No, nope. like, I have the They're, next they're just going to stay it. right here in the satchel where no one's wearing them. I can I can carry in my satchel the helmet. It's... Or do you want to carry it on your head? Is that where you want to carry the helmet? I don't know what you're talking about, Panama. You know what I'm talking about. It's okay. I understand. It's fine. So, okay. But, like, for real, this city has gotten a bit hot for us. So we do need to think about where to go now that Aegis and Lox have left. Like, I know that we have been comfortable staying here these, you know, last couple days, and I've been healing up from some of that magic damage that I took that I still don't feel like I'm completely at full strength, but I, I do think we're kind of overstaying our welcome here at the Lodge, and we need to make a decision about where to go next. I've been thinking about that, too. Um... Where can oh. we go to study Dedomancy without actually doing Dedomancy? My old university. It, uh, one of the things I've been thinking of is I'm very disappointed um, in all honesty that everything's been leading us to this big fight. We've been running for months and the big fight happened and we're still on the run. Glumgesu is still out there and I can't wait any longer to know if my teacher and my family are, are alive. And I'd like to I mean, at least see them before. Uh, you know, of course, I want to go after Fum Gesu. He murdered my sister. I have a sword with his name on it. Um, but I would want to make sure that I'm at Ooh. full health and strength before I took him on, too. So maybe if we went there, 
Um, Aja said that it looked like though it happened to me with the, the, the thing that like sucked life force out of me, like could be healed, but that he didn't know how and that it would need more time and more magic. So if we went to the university, there might be somebody who, who could help me with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe someone there also, if, if my teacher's still there, um, maybe someone could help us figure out a way to destroy these artifacts and then eventually we could recollect them and, and then they wouldn't exist. We wouldn't ever have to worry about this kind of ritual happening again. Um, or we can train with them, figure out what they do. But yeah, we could totally discuss that on the way there. Yeah. I did like that train ride. All, all I need to do is to make sure to say goodbye to my students um, and then we can be on the way. Well, I'm sorry, students? Yeah, my students. Did, did you not know? Where do you think I've been going in the afternoons? I definitely did not know or care. Oh, okay. Well, I have like, I have like an impromptu art class thing that I do. And like, I've been teaching some people to use like brushes. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, haven't you noticed the colorful eyeballs happening all around the city? Did you think I was painting them all? That's a lot even for me. Oh, God. God. Annabon has started a cult. Huh? It's not a cult, it's an art class. I... Three seasons from now, we'll be fighting Panabon. Follow a being. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, art, art is, I, I, you know, stealing stuff is great, but there's also art. Art is also important. I mean, and... I guess we should be happy, Shailene, that he's not teaching these children to steal things. So, I mean, of the two, this is much better that they're doing this instead. Sure, I'm totally not teaching anyone to steal anything. That's, I'm definitely not in any way, shape, or form. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. We it's need fine. to leave this city, Shailoon, and quickly. I really I, miss Knox. It's fine. It's fine. Everything is fine. It's mostly art. It's like 90% art. 90%. That's, that's oh. uh, Danny, I have a question. In the past month mm -hmm. and a half, um, have we found out like what they're what the authorities are doing with the bodies recovered from the tomb, the tomb itself, um, Rososi's home, and possible um, other it's, stuff? So, yeah, it's only been a, a it's only been several days oh, since okay. the events of that. It's okay. you you guys met about a month and a half ago in you know, Dasha. Oh, um, okay. So, yeah the uh, the dig site itself has mostly been closed off. Um, you've been allowed to go down there and part of your research has taken you down there um, a couple of times to like get some information about the tomb itself. So the tomb itself here, that was the tomb of uh, Mersayin. And so it was, the idea was to, uh, you gathered to raise the, to like bring Mersayin out of apparently some sort of torpor. And then before he was, uh, able to do anything or like had fully regained his uh, his power to then transfer that power into Rososi and effectively make Rososi into the god that Mersayan was. Uh, and that the items had something to do with that transfer of power in essence. The actual home of Rososi uh, you have not been allowed to go into. You feel like that has a lot to do with politics more also, than anything we else burned it down last time we were in it we didn't burn so. it down we burned it i that i i, I mean, I mean it, they it don't know that burning down as you could possibly get i, I mean yes it, so so parts of it were fired out but um it was still a home in any case um Danny, has Tiske and Naka already moved on? I, I felt like we had said goodbye to them um, when all that happened, and they said they were going to lie low, but um, I, I don't know where that continued. Um, they, they have not, as far as you know. Um, they haven't come and said any final goodbye, at least. Oh, and speaking of the scholar's house, uh, I don't remember what we did with this, but uh, Shailen, do we still have the um, homing stone crystal things that we took so they couldn't track my dagger 
bracelet thing anymore? Do we still have those? Uh, I we, that happened, yeah, we took those with us. Um, but I mean, it wouldn't have taken them long to replace yeah. if like, if they did, um, they might've so, not bothered at that point, but. So then at some point, because I'm not gonna remember this if I don't say it out loud, at some point would Panabon and Jalen have had a discussion about other potential homing crystals or that could be something we can do in the future. I, I don't know if that would have happened. In the time. Um, I think in a few days we probably would have. Um, I, I don't think now that like we've handled that situation that like it, even if they reassembled it, like nobody's going to use it on us um, unless they make like they could reconfigure it to make a new target or something like that. However, I am curious about the mirror you found in his house and any other magical items that could be useful. Um, or oh, you mean scary. the thing I threw myself into and nearly broke my nose on the wall of because uh -huh. I couldn't figure out what it was? Yep. Yeah, that thing. Uh, With the elvish around the frame? So yeah, I, that, that thing. Shay yeah. might have actually encouraged you to go back in the way we found a way out and see if you could find anything else. Um, That's what the rope is for. So that, I mean, that's and did, a left open. And did I, if, if that were to have happened, Danny, I would love to know if I found any further information. If so, that was something you had planned on doing, you have not done it yet. Okay. Duly noted. Um, other than that, uh, I just, in terms of the tomb itself, I would just kind of want to know, like, how are the bodies being reseparated or destroyed or whatever? So this kind of oops doesn't happen again. Um, the bodies of, in particular, the the five deities. Um, so the, no oh, idea, guy. no idea, because those deities, uh, they are not here. They only the the items that were pillaged from oh, their respective there. tombs. Okay. Right. Uh, the body of Mersayin was entombed. Oh, okay. And that is right now, this one of the reasons why the site is closed off is because there are people down there like trying to maybe figure that out if it's an issue that they need to worry about or what's going on with that. But um, uh, And when are they building the open-air graveyard in Jilaludi, as is our tradition in New Towns we visit to create that, an open-air graveyard? That tomb is going to become a... a, a on fire graveyard if uh they don't handle that body because like that that's got to get handled like <laughs> this was a big oops <laughs> and i'm starting to question authority and their ability to handle things so well nobody even knew about what was down there so uh keeping in mind that the um that the tomb itself had just recently kind of been discovered and that it was the scholar who was leading all of the studies surrounding it. Um, and it's possible, uh, having seen his spell book and some of the spells that were in there, that uh, he used his magic to uh, further influence kind of throughout and to maintain people looking uh, not the right way. Uh, that said, the... Um, what few dragonborn were actually killed in that battle as well. Um, those were for diplomatic reasons. Uh, they were set aside and returned to um, Halakun. Okay. Um, that, that kind of covers all of my outstandings. Um, so if, if, if Panabon can get a look, um, that would be appreciated. I, I, we're, we've kind of been thanked for our part in this, um, and like trusted to the point where like, I've gotten access to the archives and I've gotten like, they freaking gave me the fucking artifacts. Like, so like, I feel like we're okay here. We should wrap up going, but like, it, it doesn't have to be today. Uh, yeah, I think we can, you know, um, say say goodbyes that we want and maybe uh, let's book passage. I think unless we want to, you know, go there ourselves, but it'd probably be a good idea to book passage on whether we find an airship or, or someone traveling there. Like, Ooh, 
Camels to Einenland. Camels to Einenland. Oh, I no, don't know, know that camels go up that far. I look at uh, Shailen because Perunia really doesn't know. That would be ages of travel. I, no, that's like the north side of the world. We're in a different hemisphere. But didn't you enjoy the camels? I enjoyed like the two. Did weeks not enjoy the, the camels. camels. No, was, I did not. I enjoyed. The, I had a good time. With that. Camels also would only take you so far north. Um, your options are to either try to get air travel, or uh, there is a rail. Uh, Gilaluti is actually the southernmost stop for the uh, Diamaline, uh, the Diamaline Land Amal Rail. Let's take a train. Okay, Alex is very excited at the prospect of taking the train. Perunia might say, won't it be faster by airship? Who's driving the airship? Is it Zivit? Because I would probably... Zivit's gone. I mean, but isn't Zivit, like, a pilot professionally? Yeah, on his way to Istapanor. To Istapanor. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> Did you notice that? Notice that? Um, no, no, okay. I'm never gonna get that ten back that I that I loaned him. No, uh, I'm not gonna. Say that. that said, also the uh, the idea an airship is far more expensive than taking the train. Let's take a train. <laughs> we we we're running low on funds after um. Spending a lot of funds to battle and try to hide uh, our location here in Gialaluti. Well, there's also, I think there's a practical reason to take the train too, if I'm thinking about it though, because there are much fewer airships and therefore they're easier for the zigzag men to watch the few airships that come in and out with the rails and them running, you know, pretty often. And I think it might be harder for them to, to, to watch us. I actually think, I look at Panabon, I might have an idea. We can pretend to be seen looking and inquiring around airships while we actually make it by rail. So if the zigzag men are following us, which we think that they are, right? Um, that they might be looking things, for them. Yeah. Among other things, but yeah. So, sure. So I've been, I've been flirting with like a pilot for two days, and I'm sure that that was totally part of this plan and just not me flirting with with the pilot your love interests are your own none of my business um but yes if you could like make it seem more like official though actually take shaylin with you take shaylin with you because if anyone was gonna book travel look if we were really booking travel shaylin would be there so otherwise it's just panama flirting with a pilot if you're there we're purchasing tickets i'll go with i'll i'll protect you it's fine whatever whatever you need Sure. I just need us being seen to be looking like we're going to book passage on an airship and we'll make the inquiries, um, but not actually book it um, and say, like, we'll come back with the funds later or something. And then quietly, sneakily, we'll actually book passage on the rail. All right. I, 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 I like your. Um, yes. I like your she says opinion. quietly to herself. Shailene never approves of my plans. I'm so happy. Shailene's too exhausted to argue. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. All right, so two things still to do then. Book passage, or pretend to book passage, and then check out Rizzosi's home before we go. Okay. And say goodbye to my students. That, that, yes, that too. I yes, and make sure very loudly that you're saying that you're traveling on an airship in case anyone overhears you. Well, I'll just tell one. They're children, so they like... Yeah, I guess up. that's it's the same great. effect. Great. Yeah, it's good. It's There's like a fleet of them. It's great. Hi. Um, I want to tell Tiske and Naka that we're leaving, but I, I don't know that I should tell them the location because, like, if they do get captured, I mean, anyone could buckle under... Torture. The people I, who know the better. Yeah. I think they'll understand that. Yeah. And just let them know that we're we're leaving. Um, and that's it. Unless Tiske decides to come with us. Oh my god, he's not allowed to come with us. He's not allowed. Because you have yeah. feelings in your heart. Oh my god. I walked away from this conversation with that. All right. 
so you walk away from the conversation and um, take a step outside just to get some fresh air. Uh, it's nice kind of to be able to step outside and not be as worried as before. There's still, as you had mentioned, the zigzag men uh, to be concerned with, but the knowing that you're not concerned about just being seen by a member of the Inquisition, except as you step outside, kind of out of the corner of your eye, you see someone duck kind of back into an alleyway. A dragonborn, you're pretty sure, certain of it, as a matter of fact. Who sees this? Runya, who has stepped outside. I follow. And, and so you quickly move over that direction to see who it is and follow and what's going on. And we will see the, who that is and what's going on with that after we come back from our mid-game break. Awesome. All right. Uh, in the meantime, in 10. 10 minutes, check out our great commercials. Uh, feel free to uh, support our stream. Here's how you can do it. It is, oh, I'm on the wrong screen to do it. It is... You can donate bits to affect the game, give us inspiration or auto hits or nat 20s. Um, give me nat 20s. The DM needs them. Yeah, no, don't do that. Um, don't you, also, you also get 10 minutes to follow uh, remelternus.com slash kick. Yeah. Or Cause of the Clockwork Circus uh, issue two, especially because you want to know what things are happening in other parts of the world that yep. we are not currently in. Remalternus.com slash kick and remalternus.com slash misspent youth. We've given you that whole spiel. We'll be right back. Welcome back. In the last hour, our heroes bade farewell to their friends. Aegis, Lox, and Zivid, as they embarked on their airship towards East of Panur. And then they gathered together in the Blue Drop Lodge to hear the summation of Shailun's research. And then Runya almost put on a really funny looking hat, but they convinced her not to right I in tried. moment. Then we came to a break right after Purunya went outside and saw someone moving around. And then Tessa and Karen Hawk gave me a gold benefit for a natural 20 later. So we'll see when that comes up. Boo! Damn you, Tess. Thanks, Teslon, but boo! <laughs> Alexi... Lex Volkov, give me your first roll of the game, a stealth check. All right. Um, this is the pop quiz. After, after spending all this time teaching them how to use the interface. Ooh. Dirty 20. Perunia. Yes. Give me a perception check as you enter the alleyway looking for this individual. Okay. Same roll, not the same result. You go into the alleyway and, and you start looking around. You do not see the individual, but you're pretty sure that from the armband that you, you're fairly certain you saw that they were a dark claw. And not okay. Kesuke. Um, Pruny does some quick calculations in her head and decides the way that, how she's going to play this. Um, 
knowing that the Dark Claws likely are still part of her enemy, she knows that this Dark Claw is still likely to follow her. Um, so she makes as if she goes, hmm, weird, hmm, and shakes to herself like she is uh, happy to just go about her day. And she sets off um, on a path for the Dark Claw to follow. And will go traveling in circles to try to catch and see if I can see the Dragonborn again. Okay. Brunia does move off. Uh, you kind of watch her for a moment. And... Do you choose at this time to follow? Yeah, I'm going to try and follow and stealth as close as I can to others and hide. Okay. So really, um, the next couple hours, we're just going to be running the, rolling these uh, two rolls, right? Until I finally some, catch her, right? There's some cat and mouse going or, on. Or, or him. Um, I don't know who the dragonborn is yet. Uh, I'm going to... I mean, if you get, like, if they give you, like, a Panabon whistle, you could always whistle for Panabon and be like, is there someone tailing me? Okay, I, like, I'm setting it up so I get the person to, like, tell me. Like, I, I don't think I need Panabon for that. You're moving throughout the city. You've, you've gotten to know the streets of Gialaludi quite well in the past two weeks that you've been here. Uh, we can change. What was once a confusing array of platforms and bridges and stairwells and staircases that, that would lead up and down and across the various uh, mesas and cliff sides. Uh, now it's it's almost second nature. You 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 you've learned to sort of understand the way that they have set this up so that you can move in directions knowing like this is towards the palace, this is moving towards the top levels, this is moving towards the waterline, uh, and, and seeing all of those signs and how they work. And after traveling for some time, uh, it is, of course, we all know, inevitable that at some point there will be a moment where Sin will roll something low and Alex will roll something high. Higher. Probably so, won't be high. So we'll forego two hours of simulated rolling. What Sin is... Where did Sin, uh, where did Lex trip up here when they're finally discovered by Olivia? Um, probably at some point the light hit the sword on Perunia's back and he kind of pauses, recognizing the blade a little bit and probably stops trying to follow the person that he was directly behind. And so when I see the dragonborn, um, pause i turn and look the dragonborn directly in my the eye like like i see you like not saying anything but looking and i'm going to um obviously puff up my chest because that's what i do um and motion to the nearest alleyway like want to chat i do like a quick side eye and then just nod and move towards the alleyway. All right. So Perunia, we have a visual re representation for Perunia, a very large and tall dragonborn, uh, purple-hued. Six five. Six five. The rather short dragonborn uh, dark claw in front of you. Can you describe Lex? Yes, he stands at about five foot eight, has two horns that kind of like smoothly go back with two gold cuffs on each horn connected by a chain. And his frills kind of go together into a mohawk-like shape. 
um, and he has one staff with him wrapped in cloth, and his hands are feet and feet are wrapped in kind of like a dingier brownish cotton, um, and is wearing very tan colored, loose fitting like monk like robes. And he has one gold band around his neck and a white armband on his right arm. Interesting. It's, and if you ask Panabon, who knows the Dark Claw ranks, then you would know that uh, this is a uh, flow to an Eve or a mid ranking Dark Claw. Uh, so as I stalk into the alley, I kind of go probably about halfway down looking to see if there's going to be like windows or people to like overhear or see our conversation. Normally Prunia loves an audience. Um, but for, for this and not knowing what she's about to get into, she wants to see if there's anyone around. So she does a quick perception check on okay. her surroundings of the alley. Which Can I also do one. Yes. Looks probably fine to me. All right, uh, so Purunya, you do not see anyone that uh, is paying very close attention to you uh, that you notice. It, um, it does seem rather clear. Um, however, But that was a very suspenseful pause, Danny. You're muted. I thought I pushed the unmute button because I had to type a thing. And so that is in uh, the chat for Lex. And so I can't see that on my screen, viewers. Indeed. Um. I am going to wait until Prunia gets closer to me, um, and I'm going to try and lean on a wall um, and try to appear as non-threatening as possible. It's okay. Prunia doesn't feel threatened, so you're good. Um, so uh, she goes, why are you following me? I can't say this in Draconic, but I am going to try and say Chesnikov under my breath as quietly as I can. Huh. Um, I shouldn't be surprised. The last group of Dark Claws also knew my real identity, so I assume then you're also working for Flam Gesu. In some ways, I do hire. I report to someone else first. Like the Inquisitor. Levaro. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Varro being no more. Um, are we here to fight? Why do you think he's no more? You mean my you mean my brother Varro? Not the Oh oh my gosh. My Are you What is what does my brother have to do with this? He I he's 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 a pit fighter. He doesn't he does not travel in these he doesn't he doesn't do this stuff. What what well, are you talking about? He, he's not traveling, no. But he, he does Send us places. He's not in the dark claws. No, I'm here because he sent me to monitor them. Oh boy, I'm real confused. Um, Perunia leans on the wall, very um unsure of how to handle this. As far as Perunia knew, that her brother was not involved in any kind of 
rebellion or knew about anything more about her sister and the, the dealings with Flam Gesu. So she takes a beat. Okay. What did he send you to do? Well, we we work together in the coalition. My brother's in the coalition. Okay. Okay, let's pretend I believe you. How how did he know I was here? He doesn't. I was here for different reasons. Um, okay. He told me you were dead. Uh, Fair assumption. You, you looked a lot like what he described. I wanted to make sure. Okay. My brother's in the coalition, and he sent you out, but you work for Flamgesu. Let's go back to Flamgesu. Let's talk more about that. I don't report my my findings to anyone but but him or specific people in the coalition. All right, and what are you going to report back about this encounter? Also, I haven't gotten your name yet. And since you know mine, it seems only fair. Lex, you can call me that. All right, Lex. I, I don't know what have... to make of this, but if you know my brother, even if my brother is in the coalition and I knew nothing about it, welcome to Jill Ludi. And she extends her hand. He extends his to take it and shake it. I don't know what I'm reporting of this quite yet. Um, my mission got quite muddled with, thanks to you. And your mission was? And no, I'm not apologizing. Chesnikov, for sure. I am collecting intel on our Inquisition friends. Like the scholar Rososi. Mm hmm. Well, Miskro is uh, no more. I've heard. So I am not a hundred percent settled on my next steps yet. <sighs> what is what is your Invaro's? long-term gameplay in this. We are here to make sure of the success of the coalition and to make sure the Inquisition doesn't continue to thrive. Is he also looking to avenge Natasha's death? I would assume so. I do not tend to pry too much into personal lives. I know of you. I know what he has shared with me. Do you know a dragonborn dark claw by the name of Tiske? Would I? No. No. Mm. Okay. Well, um, I'm leaving the city soon, so um, I, I don't know if we'll have much more time to chat. I suppose it's probably time for me to leave the city, too, so maybe I will join you. I mean, we're down a couple people. I don't know that I trust you yet. But I also would rather you be with us than going to tell somebody else of where we are. So in the spirit of keeping your enemies closer than your friends, welcome aboard. 
I look forward to it. Um, we're staying at the Blue Joke Lodge, me and my two companions, both um, gnomes. Um, interesting sort. They're great. I'm sure you'll enjoy them. Um, we are making plans to, to leave the city very soon. If you do want to come with us, I would love to introduce you to them. It's It's been a while since I've talked to non-dragon boards. I look forward to it. Let me tell you, they are they are special, special people. Um, one you need to be really, really patient with. It's okay. They're they're fine. They're fine. How do you feel about stealing? Nope. Don't answer that. It's fine. There's no. There's not going to be any stealing. Okay. <laughs> sure. Ah, so uh, Perunia puts her arm around Lex. So tell me more about my brother and what he's been up to in his pit-fighting persona days. And yes. she and I can walk, or he and I can walk back to the, the lodge area um, if, if we want to keep that play going. Mm -hmm. um, he, he's been quite busy. Uh, he's been very much into our cause. Did it start before or after Natashka's death? Because I had suspected something, but, you know, I'm the annoying little sister, let's be honest. Um, and so he never, like, wanted me involved in anything, and he actively told me to avoid some people, and I don't know. I'm. It's kind of confusing looking back on it. I would assume perhaps after, if he also assumed you were dead by the time he joined us. Oh. he's He's been a recent addition. Okay. Okay. I feel bad that he thinks that I'm dead too. Because um, I, like, I can't imagine having to deal with like, if I thought he was dead, in addition to my sister, so that's... I'm sorry for that. I'm sure that whenever he finds out that you're still alive, he'll be quite happy. Ah, I wish our next journey was Palacune, but um, unfortunately, we're making our way to uh, the university in Ireland next. You don't strike me as a, a university. <laughs> the studio store? No, no. Uh, you would you would be correct, uh, sir. Yes, you would be correct. Um, no, our our companion Shailoon is the the um, the scholar among us, and she actually attended the university, specializing in magic before starting her her journey. But I will let you tell all of that story as we round into the lodge. All right, um, Pentagon, you're down uh, having some food with some friends, uh, considering when next you may want to meet with some other friends that you have made in the city. I, I am really drawn and custom to the lizard on a stick on the open fire. I'm, I'm enjoying it quite, quite happily. Yes. And as you are just about to take another bite out of said stick lizard, Perunia walks back in. Um, a little surprising. You, you saw Perunia walk out and expected that she would return in just a few moments, but then she just kind of darted away. Uh, but when she walks back in, it is with another dragonborn who is wearing one of the armbands of the Inquisition. <laughs> that's the uh, <clears throat> that's the sound I make as I as I'm trying to catch my breath, and it's not very discreet at all. Half, I, I'm just half like, a bite of lizard goes one way, and half the bite goes the other. <laughs> that's how the physiology of the gnome works, for sure. And I just mutter under my breath, uh, mutter under my breath. Uh, this is why I should just eat gnome bread. That doesn't happen with gnome bread. Um. 
And then nothing, I nothing happens with gnome bread. Nothing happens with gnome bread. That's the whole point. Um, and then I just kind of I I, I noticed the the armband color, so I know they're they're mid. I, I'm more concerned with the fact that they're uh, a, a dark claw. Really, I, I, I'm I'm more concerned that they're they're metallic, right? Uh, it is uh, it is a metallic bronze, most most closely bronze. Right. Okay. So I'm gonna go over and go. All hail Milfrun! Yeah, that's the thing. All hail Milfrun! And I do like a finger gun motion. This is Panabon. So he one is of the gnomes. Of... So so he is a fan no. of the Inquisition. No, not at all. Um, you're still wearing your armband. Oh. I would you uh, like him? Like I have him three eighteen all ready to go. No, nope, got like nope, Not necessary. It's, really good. Uh, it, okay. it's been a few years listening to that. No, thank you. And I like will slide the band off and just tuck it away. There has also been a bit of a hush throughout the lodge itself, as the Inquisition Dark Claw steps into the space where uh, several orcs who just a week and a half ago. Many were part of an assault. Uh, so no, really he's not one of them. He's he's cool. He's cool. So he's not with I'm, the other ones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I'm Panabon. Hello, well, welcome to the Orc Lodge. Lex. And I put my hand out. And I look around for Shailuna if she's not in the room. And where would Shailun be? Muted. That's why you can't hear her. She's like so far away. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, probably still in the room we sleep uh, writing and studying and researching. Hello. Um, I will show Lex to our quarters. Oh. <laughs> uh, is is Lex? Does Lex have like a bag or anything on them? Uh, not that you can see. Uh, uh, can I see if I can perceive for a secret bag on on Lex's person? Like I'm basically looking for like a traps or a recording device or something that like like anything that would be make a perception check. If Lex is attempting to hide something on their person, give me a sleight of hand. Okay. Um oh, I'm doing the perception. I wish I were doing the sleight of hand. Nope, you're doing the perception. Nope, I perceive nothing. Yeah. A sleight of hand is much better. Uh, as Perunia walks in, um, I recognize the heavy footfalls. Um, so I figure it's Perunia and maybe Nguyen. Um, heavy. Brood. I mean, you're a lot bigger than me, so. Uh, you're like three Shailoons. Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm, I've got my nose in a book and I go... Um, I, I think I found, um, <coughs> I've discovered, <coughs> I, up, up, I, I up, hear the up, weird and I look, look up. up, I'm going to cast Nope. Um, on? On, on whom? On, on Lex. Okay. It's hard to say who exactly you're going to cast that on. I so, mean, it's hard um, to tell. It could be any of us. Let's be honest. Okay. So, um. Go with find that, my nope. Yep, Shailene, find your nope. And weird having this not be on me because normally when when we're noping, it's it's me. Yeah, we were rushing. I'm worried about nope. <laughs> so as you are walking, um, Shailene just quickly makes a. I guess it's a placating hand gesture. Uh, and 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 the magic words, which are nope, uh, and your muscles lock up, and you find yourself unable to move. 
completely. Wait, wait, wait. Jaylun, Jaylun, Jaylun. Uh, uh, the the friend? smoking from my fingertips from the next, uh, like, bonfire are like... <laughs> okay, okay. Pause, 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 pause. Is this okay. what it looks like from the outside when this happens to me? Is this what I look like? Yeah. Oh god! Well, I mean, no. I mean, like a better like, facial. But... Yeah. Um... Is that what my, is that what my Explain face what's face going face? on. Okay, 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 okay. Um, okay. Ooh, it's actually a really long story. Um, let me summarize. Um, Lex is going to join us to Ireland. Yes. I what? Uh, what? what are you thinking? What? What's, what's happening? Okay, 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 okay. The longer story. Um, my brother joined the the rebel coalition against the Inquisition in Pelicun, and Lex works with my brother and recognized me. And Lex was sent here to find out more about what these guys were doing. And obviously, <laughs> we solved it. <laughs> no big. Um, but anyway. So Lex is supposed to be getting information back to the coalition, and they're also fighting from Gesu, the Inquisition, Zigzag Men, all of the things he's also doing. So, also, if that's not true, wouldn't it be better to have him with us so he couldn't go report back to Flam Gesu? It all works out. Despite Shailun maintaining concentration on the spell. Hold on. I would also really like to make sure that I'm rolling persuasion because I have that now on Shailun. Yes. Which wasn't great. If you're evil, I'm going to stab you. I'm just going to like look at Lex and say that. If you're evil, I'm going to stab you. Um, I am not convinced, I don't think, <laughs> with your 10. Um, well, I mean, sure, my persuasiveness, but my story was sound, right? So do I see Lex move again? You know your magic, so you are aware that the spell is broken in terms of that. You move, I would light you up. You have okay, a brother? Okay. Uh, yes, I have a brother. He's the one who trained me to be a pit fighter. Like, I've told you this. Oh. I just didn't know that he joined the coalition, it sounds like, after he thought, well, that both of his sisters were murdered by the Inquisition. Which, obviously, I did not, and I escaped, but he thinks that Flam Gesu killed me, too. Um, hey, my brother's a great guy! Now, whether or not Lex is truly with my brother is debatable, sure. We can debate that, but wouldn't we agree we would rather have him under our noses so he can't go back if he really does work from Flam Gesu and is lying to us? Um, I mean, as I, long as I don't have to do the hymns every morning, I'm good with it. I thank you. would rather never hear those again. I, I, I mean, do you want to hear the ones I invented? Because I invented like four. I live my book now. and I start flipping. Um, I start I'm still being threatened by this person so maybe not right now oh yeah no yeah that you get used to that though like i've had nope done on me like 10 times and i'm i'm fine it's fine everything's fine you'll be fine um i i flip through my book and i find one of uh my newer spells um i'm gonna uh I'm gonna say, uh, as as I uh, as I kind of like twist my my hand around, I'm gonna say, you really want to tell me the truth um, and cast suggestion. Uh, okay, I'm sure so he does. Go ahead and cast the spell. All right. Um, it is a second level. You'll have to forgive us. We're really kind of suspicious after almost being murdered several times. It's like, Jaylen I mean, has trust problems. Like it's, it's not it's in true. there yet, Danny. Yeah. Um, um but it's a wisdom saving throw if that is helpful. Okay. I mean I I get it. Uh, I kinda do this stuff every day, so Oh how interesting. I would love to learn more about that. 
I'm sure Probably you when would. You're not oh yes, I like I like learning things. Learning things is my favorite thing to do. So the DC was fifteen. Oh, I failed the. <laughs> or you succeeded because that's what you meant to do. Yeah. <laughs> is what Perunia says the truth? Yes. I'll See? slowly lower my hands. My my weapons. <laughs> Listen, if you really want to, you can check me. Panabom. Well, that's not fun. Panabom. But it's not fun this way. It's better if they don't know I'm doing it. Like the words of Panabom. Do you want bye. me to close my eyes? Oh no, no that's no, worse. No going no. to happen. I mean, I just okay. Like, if you have hidden stuff, I'm gonna stab you. And like, my dagger cuts through stone. So, so like, should I tell you possible. about the? So should I tell you hidden pockets? Is is this what's happening? Yeah. Okay. Like, if you have like a thing where like I'm gonna stick my hand, it's gonna get chomped down by like a magical deadly mouth or something. Like now it's a good time to tell me. I mean, I have darts in my sleeves, but they're not for you. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Although that's like day one in Water Relocation Academy. So like darts are like, that's fine. Um, I'm just going to start like rummaging through whatever I can because that's what I've been ordered to do. Ugh, you guys are so awkward. <laughs> well, I like honestly like, like excuse, turn and look. Our, excuse our paranoia. I slow blink at Perunia like... <laughs> <laughs> Like, you are you have kidding to defend ourselves? You'll have to excuse uh, us. Our my training yeah. sword is in the shop. Um, yeah, you can search me. Go ahead and make an investigation check, Hanabon. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh wait, actually, go ahead and and make it roll it again. You have. You have advantage because you're being assisted by the person you are searching. Oh, I mean, that's fair. Unless he really didn't want you to do All right. something. Yep. They may um, have been lying about the darts because you don't actually find them. <laughs> Awkward. Well, you're better at hiding stuff than I thought. I'll just have to do it. Like, see, see, the problem is, is when someone's like, do it and others are watching, I get like stage fright. <laughs> So I'll have to do it later when no one's paying attention. Like, that's when the real skill happens. But it's fine. Sure. I didn't explode, so, like, that's got to be good, right? There's, like, yeah. What is yeah, the goal of this coalition? To take down the Inquisition. Amongst other things, yes. Amongst like other all, things. Like, like all of them? Yes. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of people. Yeah, so I'm I'm familiar like... with the coalition in 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 you know theory. Like I I knew about the coalition. Coalition has been against the Inquisition for you know a number of years. The Inquisition's been really harsh on I mean chromatic dragonborns in particular, but of all different levels of dragonborn because they use religion as a hierarchical you know society of way to you know force people down and to bow to their religious rule. So like the the coalition's been pretty active in Palakine for a while. So that part is, is real. I just didn't know my brother was a part of it. I did but say I he was new. An alley one. Fair. You've met... Uh, I mean, the jury's still out if we think Natashka was part of the coalition, though maybe you know more on that, Lex, if my sister was actually a member of the coalition. I have never met her myself. Unfortunately, often... you won't. I'm sorry to hear that. Losing family's hard. You cross us. You'll pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get her with the sword. Get him with the sword and everything. It's, you know, it's fine. It's a buck fifty. Perunia, I really need you to stop making in making new friends and taking in strays off the street. I'm not I would like trying. to point out 
I would like to point out Rude. it's not my fault this time. Okay, it's, all right. So Tiske turned out uh, great. Naka turned out great. Flint turned out great. I'm I'm betting. <laughs> I think I'm pretty good average here. I'm I think I'm pretty great. So. Well, no, you <laughs> also, like, like, as I list off all those people, I do realize this might be a trend. <laughs> yeah, I guess I could work on that. That's fair, Shailun. I really want so to say something we're... about your head growing into that helm, but I don't want to tell Sid about that helm. <laughs> <laughs> Give me any ideas. So, so we're going to be taking an airship wink and like two days and so be prepared for airship travel on an airship yes you are absolutely convinced you are absolutely convinced that no one is going on an airship <laughs> we're, we're not rolling for that <laughs> like you yeah. just you see panabon's wink <laughs> like i look forward to this airship <laughs> Once again, I look between like the three of these people and go, why didn't I get on the ship with Aegis? <laughs> well, then you would have missed the confetti. <laughs> I like that confetti. Would... That makes oh, one. See, he gets it. Sid gets it. See, there Lex. you go. See, there we go. Or, Lex gets it. Panabon, have you made any progress at all about your assignment? Yes. Yes, I have. Um, no news is good news currently. Please get to work. I pick up my book okay. and go back to it. So I'm assuming she's the okay. previous one. She thinks she is the leader. And nobody else I'm wants right to here. Talk, frankly. I'm sitting right here in this room. I'm whispering. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not the leader, if that helps any. Uh, no one is. I'm also not leader. the leader. I'm pretty sure. I, I don't know. Not I'm not you the leader. I'm the babysitter. Before. So we're an anarchy. That's what we are. That we're we're anarchists. Mm -hmm. We have no leader. I prefer the term "free loose republic." Is me what boy, whatever challenge <laughs> you are giving me, please, I've had enough. I feel like this is going to be a fun trip. Somewhere on an airship, on the there is a ka ching sound that Aegis hears. Did we just get another follower? <laughs> <laughs> the posters in the mail. Um, okay, well, I'm I'm going to go off. I have an errand to run that involves me going to a bookshop and getting a book because that's what Jaylun likes. So I'm going to go and get the book, which is, I think you want that romance novel this time between the gnomes. It's, it's called like the, I, the gnome I, I and, and the fountains. I don't want anything from the bookstore. I want you to do your research so that you know what you're gonna Shailun, say. like that's what he means. That That's what he, they mean. They, yeah, what they, they're I speaking in cold. It was, it was cold. It was, I, I'm gonna go do the thing and, and before they I- didn't, They didn't they wink. There was no wink. some help? I, <laughs> Do you like sewers? Uh, I don't know that anyone likes sewers. That's. I mean, how do you? I like mine. One to ten. How do you feel about? Okay, well, that's. I, I, I mean, I. She I just guess closes if, her books and goes. Too sure. And looks at Perunia and goes, "I'm gonna go get those, airship tickets." And great. Okay. Uh, I will follow Shailun because if she was really getting airship tickets, I would be providing her protection. But I stand like five feet back from her, so like, like, because I know she's mad at me right now. <laughs> also, and as you are, as you are walking. Uh, you note Nguyen, who sees Shailene first. Uh, she's putting something into a satchel uh, that she is then closing up uh, and then actually like placing a lock on it. 
and she kind of gives Shailu a little bit of a nod, uh, and then notices you behind. Um, well, I'm uh, headed back out into the desert. Mm, safe travels, my friend. We'll yeah. be heading out ourselves on an airship in two days. Mm. Wish you were coming with us, Nui. Well, uh, I mean, given the, given what you asked of me, and uh, there's just other things that need to be done. Thank you, friend. Um, yes. And you, um, We often measure strength by size, stamina, and raw physical power, but I've learned that strength can sometimes be a small gnome woman carrying a burden no one should have to bear. I, I go to try to give tiny hugs. Uh, she does take a knee and return the hug uh, warmly. I wish you all the best of fortune as you travel north. You too. Um, I will shake her hand in a, the, the warrior grass yeah. for it, with that, as, as the orcs do. So yes, thank you, does. friend, for everything. Be mindful out there. I know you like a good show. Um, but some of those eyes aren't looking to cheer you on. And with that, she shoulders the bag that she just packed up uh, with the lock, um, which is a little odd for Perunia, uh, as the orcs aren't, they don't tend to be as mindful about that sort of thing, like securing their belongings, quote unquote. Um, there's a lot of trust between the orcs uh, and the average person probably just doesn't want to be caught stealing an orc's things. But uh, but you do note that padlock and then she steps out into the evening air and uh, starts making her way towards the caravan grounds. Um, And the two of you then head out to go grab some airship tickets while Panabon takes their newly found friend Lex to go root around in some sewers. And we will pick that story up next week when we return. Uh, thank you, everyone for joining us on the first episode of our year two of the game, not of the, uh, of us playing the game. Uh, it's only been, it's only been a month and a half since we started in game. Um, but that's the ago. way it goes. Um, so once again, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you to uh, Sarah and Rem Alternus for hosting us. And thank you to our moderators and, of course, to the wonderful cast who joins me every week so that we can uh, tell this story together. Um, we'll see everybody next week. That is the 15th of May. So we'll see everybody on the 15th of May like clockwork. Bye. Bye.